Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be testing and rating some viral high-end makeup. I like to sprinkle in some high-end makeup in the mix so I can let you guys know what's worth splurging over or not if you do decide to splurge. If not, then this is just for fun and we're just hanging out having some girl time. So I did wanna mention a couple of these things were sent to me in PR, but I did purchase quite a bit of these and it's funny because some of the stuff that was sent to me, I actually purchased myself. We're gonna go through and just do a little full face. I'm thinking a pop of color with a simple smoky eye and glowy skin of course so make sure you guys grab a snack get cozy or grab your makeup and your brushes so we can get ready together and let's get into it and have some girl time okay so i'm going to start off with the eyes i'm just going to take my rare beauty eyeshadow primer because i have a new eyeshadow palette here which i have never tried before surprisingly and it's actually really popular so i wanted to test it out finally because i'm like better late than never right so i'm just going to take this and bring it all the way up to the brow bone i love this eye base it's super lightweight it works with all of my eyeshadow shadows it makes them pop last all day now for eyeshadow palette i cannot believe i've never tried this before but i'm gonna go in with the master mattes eyeshadow palette for makeup by mario i want to say that i got this weeks ago i honestly don't even remember but i'm finally testing it out so i'm gonna start off with this color right here and i think i'm actually no yes i'm gonna take this color and then a little bit of this shade and i'm just gonna apply those starting on the outer lid just gonna work that in circular motions and then bring that into my crease, blending it outwards a little bit towards the tail of my eyebrow. First impressions, these two colors that I applied are blending in really nicely. You can see they're very smooth. There is some kickback, but I feel like, honestly, what eyeshadow palette doesn't have kickback. My palettes always get kickback and I get fallout, but it usually doesn't really bother me. That's why I always do my eye makeup first anyway. Let's go into this brown shade. Very pigmented, I will say, and I like the packaging of this palette. I think it's such a good size and I love the mirror too. Then I'm gonna take this color right here. A lot of them honestly look so similar, these shades. I'm just gonna put that kind of towards the center of my lid, blending it with that brown color that I applied on my outer lid. I'm gonna take a little bit of this mustardy brown and I'm just gonna put that also in my crease. I will say these do layer really nicely. They have nice color payoff, they're smooth. And then I'm gonna take this matte cream shade. Let me use a different brush. Ooh, wow, that color's really pigmented. Maybe I should've used the matte, like, peachy shade. Let me try that instead. I think that might be better. And then just kind of diffusing it out as I go. I love how pigmented the lighter colors are too. That's really nice. Oh yeah, I like the way the peach matte shade looks more than that whiter or lighter one. Elf eye tapes, of course. We're gonna do a little smoky winged liner with the black eyeshadow. I'm gonna use the black in the palette, which I really appreciate the fact that there's a nice matte black in here. And then I'm gonna dip into that darker chocolate brown on a very tiny fluffy brush. I'm going to smudge out a little bit of that black shadow on the outer edge a little bit. And then we remove the tape. Perfect edge every time. This looks so good though. I love this smoky eye. I think smudging everything out really helped. Trust the process, because I know this was looking a little crazy at first, but take your time, blend it out, make it work. I think it would have been really cool to see maybe, let's say, at least like three of these colors right here replaced with these kind of like mid-tone browns, but a little bit less warm, more cool tone browns. I think if there would be some cool tones in here, I would definitely give it a 10 out of 10. I'm gonna go with eight out of 10 because the formula is amazing. I will say it blended really nicely. The shades layer beautifully too, and the black 
chef's kiss but a lot of these colors do look very similar let me just show you one of my favorite higher end cool tone palettes that i think is perfect especially if you are more fair or if you just like cool tone eyeshadows versus warm i got you so i have raved about these dose of colors eyeshadow palettes for forever the baked browns too is one of my favorites this one has speaking of warm tones some warm tone shades as well love this palette but the pretty cool palette also all matte but you can see these are beautiful cool tone shades so i feel like maybe a couple of these thrown into this palette it would have been such a nice addition but this is a great alternative i've actually been using this palette in conjunction with the big bronze too and i think they complement each other really nicely so now i'm gonna curl my lashes i don't have a new mascara but one of my favorite high-end ones is actually from rare beauty the perfect strokes mascara it gives volume length thickness doesn't flake it just really gives my lashes everything that they need so this gets a 10 out of 10 for me i really don't have anything bad to say about the mascara it really is an all-in-one mascara so if you're gonna splurge i think this is a really great option i wish it came in the waterproof version i guess that's like my only complaint i think i am gonna put on a lash i've been loving the af94 lashes in the style lash 03 they're just very voluminous and they just do it for me now we're gonna move into the skin i did just spray a little bit of the dalba first spray serum i actually got this on amazon this is my second bottle this is one of my favorite glowy sprays and you can incorporate it in your makeup routine or your skincare routine anyways i've seen this foundation going around and i actually was gonna purchase it and i got it in pr which i did not expect but this is the good apple full coverage serum foundation from kbd vegan beauty so we're gonna go in with the foundation and then there's also a primer in here so apparently this is supposed to be a natural full coverage foundation and there's also a pore refining primer with it i don't know if this color is going to match if not i will take something else to lighten it up a little bit but let's try the primer first so this is what the packaging looks like by the way i honestly had no idea that this primer even existed i've only seen the foundation that's probably too much whatever let's just blend this in oh i'm loving the texture of it a little bit kind of has a slight silicone base also feels a little bit cooling when you apply it and i will say it does feel super smoothing so after using this primer now i just realized this is very similar to the pore eclipse mattifying primer from milk makeup which i actually really like especially if you have oily skin this is so mattifying but it's also not drying it has a very similar texture so you can see it's a little bit thicker but you see it kind of has like that smoothing finish to it. So it is super similar to KVD, the texture of both of the primers. Yeah, they're basically almost like identical, to be honest. I feel like the one for Milk Makeup is slightly a little bit more cooling and mattifying. So yeah, super similar. I feel like if you already have your go-to pore filling primers, this isn't really necessary. Also, Rare Beauty has a pore diffusing primer that I really like as well. But let's get into the foundation because this is what I'm super excited about. So it is pulling a little bit kind of yellowy. I don't know if it's going to match. I'm thinking, should I mix in something? So I'm actually going to mix in a little bit of my LA Girl Mixing Pigment just to tone down some of the warmth to this foundation. Hopefully that helps. The foundation in general, by the way, is in medium 042. So it is going to be a little bit kind of yellowy, but we're going to make it work. And you know what? I'm also going to add just a touch of the foundation mixing pigment also from LA Girl in the shade white. So with the mixing pigments, it definitely helped, but the foundation I think is still not my perfect shade i think i need like maybe one shade lighter but it is blending in really nicely it does have good coverage i have a red pimple right there so let's cover that up and see how it tones down the redness i will say it does give really good coverage and it is pulling a little bit more on the matte side because of that primer like i said it does mattify the skin i think that's really pretty though it looks good let me see the claims on this foundation because i'm very curious apparently this is also transfer proof which is interesting full coverage natural finish best for oily combo and normal skin i think i'm gonna do the other side with the sponge just to kind of compare coverage i don't really use a sponge anymore just because i love the way the brush applies my product so much but i'm just gonna try it out and see how it looks yeah it's definitely still yellow i think it helped 
tone this down a little bit, but it's still pulling pretty yellow. I think you definitely get more coverage with a brush. If you want to sheer this out, definitely use a sponge. And I think the finish is going to vary depending on how you prep your skin for sure. I like it more with a brush. I think it looks also a little bit smoother. I think it does look really good. Obviously the color is off. I could have probably actually used a little bit more of that mixing pigment. And I have to agree with the claim of it feeling lightweight, but giving good coverage because it doesn't feel like a heavy foundation, even though it gave, I think, really decent coverage. So I don't have a brand new high-end concealer, but I am just going to use the faux filter from Huda Beauty. This one I have in the color Vanilla Swirl. So this is a soft matte concealer, but it's still really hydrating. And I like the way this formula feels on my under eyes, but it also wears really nicely too. So this has been a concealer that I have really enjoyed. So the concealer is matte, but it also is still hydrating. It's not like a dry matte. I would definitely give this concealer a 10 out of 10. I really don't have anything also bad to say about it. I've been using this for a couple months now. And just to lighten this a little bit, I'm gonna go down my T-zone. Just to lighten the foundation, make everything kind of just come together. And this is what the foundation looks like on my phone. I'm just using my front camera to show you. I think it looks really smooth. And I mean, you can see that coverage that it gave. It looks really pretty though. I like the concealer too in combination with the foundation. I think that looks really good. A really exciting package here from Milk Makeup. They actually sent over their new, let me look at the specific name. I wanna get it right. Okay, Sculpt Cream Contour Stick. This is the darkest color, by the way, in the shade Sizzle. I'm so happy to see this from Milk Makeup, especially because I have been such a big fan of their bronzer stick. This one is in the color Baked. I love this packaging, by the way. This is like a little bit bigger. The ones that they have now are smaller, so I'm hoping maybe they'll come out with something slightly bigger, but I'm really happy about the shades. I'm gonna try out the color Stoked today. Oops, I just took this off and a little bit of it broke on the top. Oh, okay, so this is definitely a little bit more cool tone so i can see why these are labeled as contour shades because it has a little bit of that grayish cool undertone which i actually like i don't mind you know especially with this formula because it's so blendable do you see how that just blended in like literally two seconds wow that's really nice i actually like that color a lot look at the chisel i think so far my only complaint is the fact that the packaging is so tiny. I wish that these were bigger. I wonder why they didn't come out with bigger packaging ones because it's such a good formula, like I said, but this is so tiny. It's like travel size. I'm liking the formula a lot though because it is very blendable. 10 out of 10 as far as formula and color. Overall, I think I would rate it probably just a 9 out of 10 in general because of the packaging. I wish that these were bigger. That's a gorgeous formula. I like that a lot, and I like this color. Again, this one is in Stoked. Now we have some blush. I'm going to start off with this one from One Size. This is the Cheek Clapper 3D Blush Trio. The color that is sold out and viral everywhere is called Attention Seeker, which is the hot pink. I could not get my hands on that because, like I said, it's literally sold out. So I got a different color. This is the more, like, pinky or peachy corally blush so you get a cream a powder and a highlighter in here so it's a really nice concept there's also a huge mirror so i'm going to start off with the cream first and i'm going to do one side with this blush and then i have another blush from charlotte tilbury that we're going to test out on the other side starting with the cream first very pigmented i barely dipped my brush in there too i'm just going around the edges of this just a little bit to tone it down the contour and the blush just a little because we're gonna add more with the powder and wow that's really pretty didn't lift any of my foundation it's pigmented and blendable like it didn't you don't really have to put a lot of effort in to blend out the color i'm gonna use the powder in just a minute after i set but let's do charlotte tilbury pillow talk matte blush wand on the other side this one by the way is in pink pop it's always so satisfying seeing the product come out oh okay let's see So this is matte, but it definitely has a lot of like a dewiness to it. You can see even compared to this one from one size, it's a little bit more kind of seamless on the skin. And even the finish of it is just very natural. Whereas this one, it has that dewy kind of finish to the blush. And then this is the color swatched again. It's like pink. It almost has a bit of like a corally undertone. 
and then blending it in. It does get pretty sheared out. It almost gives a very natural flush though. So it's not gonna be super intense. I definitely see this one from one size being much more intense. So for the under eyes, I'm gonna go in with the Dominique Cosmetics Brightening Setting Powder. This is her pink setting powder. I just tested this out a few days ago and this is really smooth. I was like shocked at how good my under eyes looked. So I'm gonna use this for my under eyes and then I'll use a different powder for the rest of my face. See how like good that looks? It's smooth. And it mattifies, but it's also hydrating. Apparently, there is hyaluronic acid in this powder, too. So it feels really nice on the under eyes. I wore it the other day, like I said, when I tested it out. And I was shocked at how smooth my under eyes look. Especially because my under eyes can look pretty dry and crepey. Especially after wearing makeup all day. And no matter what, I always like have concealer that settles into those little fine lines. But with this powder, I think it looks really good. And it... It really smooths you out. And then to set the rest of my makeup, I'm gonna use my LYS Triple Fix Translucent Setting Powder. This one's in the shade Resilience. And I am very lightly just gonna dust this on the rest of my face to set my makeup. I'm gonna take the one size blush trio and I'm gonna take the powder. Oh wow, it's so pigmented. Wow, you don't even need that much of this, honestly. And then with the same brush, I'm just wiping off any excess blush. I'm gonna take the highlighter, which is gonna act more so as like a blush topper. Yeah, it looks really smooth too when you apply it. Very pigmented. I'm definitely giving this a 10 out of 10. I feel like this is just a good value overall. The quality, the pigment. I'm just gonna go ahead and line my waterline with some KVD Tattoo Pencil Liner in Trooper Black. And then I'm gonna take some of this warm tone brown with the cool tone brown. And I'm just gonna run that right underneath. If you have a lot of fine lines like I do, taking a brown eyeshadow on your lash line will help to conceal that last but not least besides setting spray i'm gonna go ahead and do a little lip liner and we have a new liquid lipstick here from fenty so this is specifically the velvet liquid lipstick and this one i have in the color the mvp and this i also purchased and then i just got it in pr yesterday so i can't wait to try the other shades but this red looks stunning. I'm thinking, do I want to do all red or do I want to add a little maybe like a brown lip liner? Because brown lip liner with red lipstick is always a look. Let's just go with it. I'm going to take the Rare Beauty Kind Words Matte Lip Liner and I have the color Strong, which I've actually never tried. It is her darkest brown color. This lip liner is one of my all-time favorites. I've already gone through like two of them. The shade, what is it, Wise? Yes, Wise is my go-to. It's always in my purse. And it's also a very long-lasting formula. So if you're ever splurging, this is a good splurge item. Can you see how they just glide on? And then I'm just gonna feather in a little bit of the lip liner right on the outer edges of my lips. Now let's go in with the Velvet Liquid Lip. Oh, wow. That's a good red. It, it's picking up, I think, a little bit different on camera. I think it's picking up kind of like a little bit brighter. And then I'm just going to take a little bit more of that lip liner and I'm going to feather that into the red. All right, I'm just adding a little bit more. I feel like whenever I do bold lips, it takes a little extra time just to perfect it and make it look super blended, especially when you're using a darker lip liner. This is a really gorgeous red. I feel like on camera, maybe it's just me right now, but it's picking up kind of orangey, the undertone of this red, but it has no orange undertones. This is a true like bright red. All right, you guys, I'm really in love with this look. It's giving me kind of like date night vibes, like just sexy, vampy. Pretty much everything that I mentioned as I went through, my opinions still stay true. The eyeshadow palette is gorgeous. However, we just need a couple more little cool tones in here and it would have been a perfect palette. It is really nice though. I will say the colors layered nicely. They blended really nicely. But again, eight and a half out of 10, maybe even eight, just because we need some cool tones in here. But it's a nice palette. I'll definitely keep using it. The foundation and primer combo. I think is nice. I don't think the primer is necessary. However, especially if you have, I can imagine already a ton of pore filling primers in your collection. I don't really think you need this. I, to be honest, I think I like this one from Milk a little bit more. However, the foundation, now that it has settled, and I've been filming for a few hours at this point, I think it looks even better than when I first applied it. It looks so smooth, but it's still really comfortable. I like the coverage. I like the finish of it. And I just think it looks truly very flawless on the skin. The concealer from Huda Beauty looked 
looked beautiful over top of the foundation. I actually meant to talk about this in my January hits and misses because I've definitely been using this for quite some time now and I love the formula of this cream contour. I really enjoyed this from Milk Makeup. Again, I just wish the packaging was better. I think it could be improved. It could be bigger. So it is very consistent to their matte bronzer if you guys have tried this same exact formula if not i feel like it's even better it's so blendable the blushes are gorgeous i'm loving this one from one size just checked the prices the one size blush is 38 and then the one from charlotte tilbury is 42 so a couple more dollars i would say if you're going to splurge of course go with the one from one size you're getting more bang for your buck and this is just such a great value i love this entire concept it's just it's a moment and it's really good this lip combo is gorgeous however keep in mind the liquid lipstick from venti is not going to be transfer proof i was looking more into it and it's really meant to just be a very extremely rich and pigmented formula with a comfortable velvet finish which i agree so it's not totally matte so it is going to transfer it might smudge and smear i think what really helps with that is just going in with a lip liner and this one from Rare Beauty, like I said, is super long lasting. So I think this is a nice little combination. I'm going to go with maybe 9 out of 10 because it's a gorgeous shade. I wish it was transfer proof, but it still feels super comfortable. My standout product in today's video is for sure the one size blush. I just love everything that you get in here. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Check the description box below for all details. And let me know if you have tried any of these goodies. What are your thoughts? Thank you guys so much for being here. I love you all. And I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye.